Diana, what would you do if uh, you had 40 days to stay, uh, to stay at your home and would focus on one thing? What would that be? Well, I think um, because in what I do um, on a normal day um, and in, in my normal life is being a racing driver, I would focus on, on my fitness and my mental training because I want to be as prepared as possible um, to when things start to get more normal and, and I can do what I love. So I would focus on, on that. So for a race car driver, the physical aspect is, is, is very, very important, right? And, and many, types, many times people uh, don't know that it requires such a strong physical, physical preparation. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that and how your journey has been from when you started to even going up to what you're doing now and even driving a Formula One car? Yeah, exactly. You're so right. I think uh, people underestimate because they see you sitting uh, comfortably in a in a single seater in a Formula One car and, and they don't realize how physically and mentally demanding that is. And particularly for a woman, because we have 30% less lean muscle than men. So um, it's a huge challenge to um, To, to be fit enough to drive one of these cars. So I, I dedicate a lot of time to firstly studying like the differences between men and women and how I needed to, to train in a different way or train uh, more from, let's say, put an example like uh, the quick fibers. Uh, women have less quick fibers than men. so. I had to adapt my training to, to, to train those quick fibers more and more often than what a guy would do, uh, just to compensate for some uh, strength or things that I needed in the car. Um, so I, I train uh, a lot, uh, like two, three hours, four hours in pre-season tests, uh, in pre-season um, to, to be able to drive and to um, express my full potential um, but it's it's been a bit of a discovery in in, in a way that um, most of the drivers are men so they they build a program based on uh, on what they have and the information they have and they don't have information uh, from women and we are our bodies are different we think differently and uh, for example we have a period so you have also to um, to schedule your training um, based on, on, on how your body is and your hormonal system. So it's, um, it's a lot of uh, things behind it so that I can be as competitive as I can and show my full potential. And also because most of those cars, well, not the Formula One, but for example, what you raced last year, the Formula Two car, they don't have power steering. So it means the mm -hmm. upper body needs to be trained quite a lot so that she could turn the, the steering wheel. And also like a Formula One car, you have to, you're exposed to your neck, it's exposed to around five to six Gs. So that's like almost 40 kilos that you need to hold with your head. And uh, believe me that <laughs> when you go and break for the first time in a Formula One car, you deal with really feel okay that, that hard training was definitely needed and worth it because now i can i can feel like i can do the job i remember i had the first time she trained the neck i had to uh put her some voltaren in the neck and vinnie fell so that she could train the day after and almost like carrying her because it was like there are muscles really little muscles that you never train so oh we God. know people never use so uh it's quite uh difficult and exhausting <laughs>